Let us begin with the numbers. So today um, we are talking about total cases at 5,878 um, and our hospitalizations are a little bit above 1750. Um, and un unfortunately, we have now seen 231 deaths in the state of Ohio from COVID-19. Next slide, please. A couple things I'd like to point out. Um, we do know that we have tested about 58,000 in Ohio. Uh, we still have about 84 counties reporting at least one case. Uh, our ICU um, admissions are still in the 9% range. Our hospitalizations right now are 30% of our cases because we know we're testing the sickest. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is a new slide that we have on our website. Again, really trying to be as transparent as we can be and share with you the data as we have it. Um, this was the dashboard I showed yesterday that's tracking a five-day case average so we can start to see trends. Any one day we might see a slight fluctuation, but the data we're really concerned with here is starting to watch the trends. We know we're sort of flattening, and that flattening is by and large staying even. It might be flat for a long time, not a sharp peak to this. Um, but what we really are looking forward to seeing is those numbers going down. Um, and this gives you sort of a five-day trend. Next slide. This slide actually shows um, hospitalizations, a little bit of detailed data. The mean age at hospitalization is 64, but as you can see here, um, on the age range from as, as young as under 19 and then going up by decade, you can see it's a bit skewed. So we are seeing people younger in the 40s, 30s, 20s, and um, a few that are in the zero to 19 age that are hospitalized. We are in our data overall of cases seeing slightly more females, but something we've seen around the country that hospitalizations, in this case 56% are male. So it is for various reasons that the science is still trying to elucidate, seeming to be um, worst scenario for, for males. Next slide. Does it forward? Uh, no more slides than that? OK. So we have this in all data on our website. As the governor mentioned, we're starting a new dashboard that actually has the new CDC uh, case definition in it. Just by way of background, case definitions by the CDC, which guide how states count cases, has been evolving since the beginning of this disease. It began very early on with a case being called someone who had traveled from Wuhan province. And then it expanded gradually to all of China. And then it expanded to additional countries. And then it expanded to the United States. So that definition continues to evolve with the understanding of this disease. But very importantly, um, the, the subtle changes that have occurred, as the governor said, are talking about um, expanded uh, confirmed case definitions. So in the past, a confirmed case was from a test. That test being a special kind of test called a PCR test. That's the test that we've been talking about for the most part all along. Um, now there are some new testing technologies available. We still don't have them in any significant amount in Ohio. One is a rapid genetic test called the ICD, the ID Now. That's an Abbott test or a few other brands. Those can do a rapid two hour, but it's still more like those PCR tests. Pretty soon, as the governor said, the test I'm waiting for are the antibody and antigen tests that are a prick of the finger versus anyone who's had this test knows what I'm talking about, or a flu test, the swab that you actually have um, go down your nose. And it, it's people who've had it um, know that that is not fun. Having a quick test that you can do blood on will help us rapidly diagnose people both with the disease and an antigen, and also people who have recovered from the disease 
all of that data is so essential for us figuring out who now is no longer susceptible but has actually recovered. And, and as we know, we are all susceptible because this is a novel virus. So that new definition will be including the new types of testing that are now available, though I can tell you um, that is not really widely available in Ohio yet. What that did for us is change our case definition yesterday by about 17 cases. So it's still not a lot of numbers, but we wanna be really clear with folks where we're getting our numbers as we move forward. Um, and it also allows the diagnosis of cases in epidemiologic and clinical conditions. What that means is, for instance, in a nursing home, where we have very few tests available, once you've tested a couple of the nursing home residents and they clearly, in the old PCR test, have COVID-19, we can pretty much guarantee that every other case, if they're flu negative and no other respiratory disease, are basically a spread of that disease. So those very detailed clinical cases that have a tie to a very clear person who tested positive as their exposure is also counted. So we see the tip of the iceberg right now. We have to be very clear and transparent with you. All of these numbers are a gross underestimation of the amount of disease out there. Again, most people are mildly symptomatic 25%, up to 25% may be asymptomatic or carrying it, and we have no way of knowing that they're doing that, and we're not really testing those folks with our very limited tests. So we know all these numbers are still the tip of the iceberg. We're seeing a little bit more of the tip of the iceberg with this new definition, but until we have full and available testing, we really won't know. The most important thing for us right now is to continue to follow trends, and that's why we share that data as well. And we'll keep sharing more as we know more.